Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In Northern Canada, in the Northwest Territories, the temperature in the last week, you know, we're still in March, reached 71 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 21.6 degrees Celsius. Now these temperatures over a widespread part of the Northwest Territories at high latitudes would would normally be uh, about freezing point or slightly below the freezing point. So below zero Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. So basically they're 20 to 25 degrees Celsius warmer than expected over a vast region of the Northwest Territories. We know that the Arctic is warming much, much faster than the rest of the planet. Okay, um, you know, double, People say double when they define the Arctic as, you know, from 60 to 90 degrees north latitude. But when you go up higher in the Arctic, it's more like a factor of three times or four times or five times the warming of the Arctic relative to the global average warming. So there's, there was an article that came out, you know, is three to five degrees Celsius locked into the Arctic? Well. You know, that's the same as asking, are we locked into two degrees Celsius or 1.5 degrees Celsius? You know, the, the Paris targets and they're, they're, they're seeming more and more difficult to, if not impossible to attain. You know, let's take the two degree number, just double it for the Arctic, that's four degrees. So it should be no surprise to people that, you know, that we're talking three to five degrees at least in the in the Arctic. So anyway, I'm going to talk about some recent papers that um, that are talking about these things, you know, and what's going on in the bigger picture of Ar Arctic warming. Okay, so what we have here, this is my, uh, just went dark, this is my blog, my website, just google paulbeckwith.net and have a look. And I rely exclusively on donations. It keeps me doing independent climate system research and analysis for you. So this article just came out recently. For the first time since records began, the Northwest Territories hit 20 degrees Celsius in March. So you can see some of the meltwater, solar panels, etc. Okay, um, Yohin Lake posted a Tuesday high of 21.6 degrees Celsius. That was on March 19th. This broke the previous high temperature record in the Northwest Territories for March of 19.9 degrees Celsius, just back in March, end of March, 2016. So vast parts of the territory sweltered in these record or near record temperatures. Um, they rely on ice roads in this region. The Mackenzie Valley Winter Road was formally closed early on Wednesday. Okay, and that stranded people, that, so they had to make um, different different uh, contingency plans to to get these stranded people to their homes. Now, the data set at the Yohin Lake, where the record was set, goes back just to 1959, but other data sets go back to the 1900. Nothing has appeared in March above 20 degrees Celsius. So, so it's an extremely rare sort of situation. Daytime temperatures are running 20 to 25 degrees Celsius above normal. Okay, so these ice roads basically turned into mud and became impassable, stranding people and had to be closed down. I just want to show you where this place is. So this is Yohin Lake in the Northwest Territories, 61 degrees north, 123.78 degrees west. Okay, so we can zoom in and see what the region is looking like on Google Earth. Okay, so this is the region where the meteorological station is. And the winter roads, I searched for this article, the Mackenzie Valley Winter Road System, which was just closed down just to get some information on it. There's maps and so on here. But what I wanted to show you here is these are the general closing dates, just a five year average. So early April, 
you know, the first week of April, the road normally roads normally close down these ice roads. Okay, um, and they normally open um, towards the end of December, New Year. So they're open for basically January, February, and March, three months of the year, about twelve weeks. And this year, it closed down a couple weeks early. Okay, and then there's all kinds of different maps of the different passages, like Northwest Territories, ice crossing information, highways. So we have winter roads here, the blue dashes. So there are winter roads, there's gravel roads. Okay, so they rely on a lot of these winter roads, which go over the ice and rivers and so on, um, these blue areas extensively. And in, in order to get supplies to different communities and for people to travel, and these roads are 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 going the way of the dodo. They're going uh, extinct, <laughs> basically. Now, go into Google Earth Null School, click on Earth at the bottom. I set the mark here at the coordinates of the lake where the temperature record was set in the Northwest Territories. And if you click on Earth, you can see the menu. So we're looking at the surface temperature here. So anything green is above zero. Um, and this is at present. So let's go back and have a look. Um, let's go back day by day. Okay, and you can have a look at all at the green area. So we'll go back to, so this is the 17th. This is March 16th. And then we can go, you, first of all, you can look at the daily trend. Well, you, well, let's go to the uh, 19th when the record was set. Okay, this is the 19th and this is the local time. So it's five o'clock. Okay, so we'll go into the morning, five in the morning, two in the morning. Okay, two in the morning on March 19th. And then we can at five in the morning. So you can see the, you can follow the green areas here that are above zero and see our location. So I'm just advancing throughout the day. So this is at two in the afternoon, five in the afternoon, um, eight o'clock at night and so on. Okay, so you can see how the variation is day to day. Um, so let's go back to the uh, maximum time, maximum temperature, roughly about here, and let's cycle through the day. So this is, we'll go back a little bit. So March 17th, 18th, and you can see the temperatures recorded here, 20, uh, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and so on, the projected for the 24th. Now we can look at the jet streams. We can go to, now what you're seeing here is this warming. There's obviously going to be a ridge, a strong ridge of the jet stream, allowing that warm air to come up into that region. So if we go to uh, 250 millibar, which is, or hexapascals, one millibar is one hexapascal, these are the winds. So these are the jet streams. So let's go back to Let's quickly go back to the 17th or so. Okay, and what you can see is you can see, so this is a region, so there's a bridge here starting to develop and let's see what happens, how it progresses. So we get a, a complete, almost a circular loop here rather than, and then as we, as and then it starts to join and, and become more of a ridge-like pattern. Okay, so the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, Okay, so here is, you know, your classic ridge. So the warm air is coming up here and we're getting all of these huge temperature anomalies in the Northwest Territories. Okay, so what's the general overall picture? Well, the Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet. And these recent papers that came out in the last few weeks talk about three to five degrees Celsius rise now locked in for the Arctic. Okay, this is just my um, Facebook page. Um, okay, where I'm posting all kinds of information on climate and other things, but focusing on climate. And uh, this is my Twitter feed at Paul H. Beckwith. So please follow me if you're not. And uh, I'll be talking about this flooding in the U.S. soon and horrible flooding and uh, you know, the, the inability of dams to control it, etc. 
IPCC is underselling climate change, all kinds of stuff here. But what I want to look for is here. Okay, so there's artic here's an article by Carbon Brief fact checking. Is three to five degrees C of Arctic warming now locked in? Okay, so first of all, so this is a fact check article, and they basically they talk about reports in a number of news outlets that talk about this locked in, inevitable, unavoidable warming. So here's one of them. Sharp rise in Arctic temperatures now inevitable, UN, three to five above pre-industrial, even if the Paris goals are met. Well, when you think about it, um, you know, what, what it comes down to is how do you define the Arctic? Okay, because this article says that warm, winter temperatures at the North Pole are likely to rise at least three Celsius above pre-industrial by mid-century. Okay, that's, um, and there could be further rises to between five and nine um, above the recent average for the region. And then it talks about all the effects of melting ice and permafrost, the tipping points, feedbacks, etc. And here's, an, here's my quote used again, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. It's not like Las Vegas. Usually the Las Vegas part's left off, but I lay claim to that quote from over a decade ago. Okay, so this is one of the articles. So what is the fact checking basically saying? Uh, what it's saying is that, um, so there was a recent report, a UN environment report, and this is the report. I highly recommend that you have a look at it. It's called Global Linkages, a graphic look at the changing Arctic. And there's lots of different maps and in, in, info um, plots and things. Um, so graphical view of what's happening in the changing Arctic. You know, in terms of the fact check from Carbon Brief, um, they're saying that there were some inaccuracies in the reporting and they're talking about saying that the the mainstream media reports were talking about um, RCP 4.5 representative, representative concentration pathway 4.5 which is not the lowest um, pathway RCP 2.6 by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that's sort of the that, that would be required in order to have any chance of being near the Paris targets of two degrees Celsius. You know, we won't really talk about the 1.5. Okay, but, um, you know, it, and it talks about the details and, you know, what the Paris targets actually said, and it talks about the details about what the um, Arctic uh, Monitoring Assessment Program report in 2017 talked about and about this new report, this new report, which relies on data, you know, it doesn't prevent, it doesn't present new scientific data. What it does is rely on, 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 um, you know, it sort of summarizes what the latest is. So, um, again, you can have a look at that, um, and, uh, see the details, but, you know, it's basically saying that the mainstream reports saying this is locked in aren't really that accurate. And, you know, I, I have to kind of, kind of, uh, disagree with that myself. Um, you know, I don't see mention of what will happen when there's no sea ice. Okay. So, you know, when there's no sea, the sea ice actually, um, keeps the Arctic cold. It keeps the Arctic as a refrigerator and we lose the sea ice the ocean water warms up significantly. There's a lot of mixing and, you know, the Arctic is going to skyrocket to much, much warmer temperatures. Also, a key fact to, remem to remember is that when you see reports like this, you know, three to five degrees C of Arctic warming, this would be average warming. I mean, look at the Northwest Territories. It's 20 to 25 Celsius above normal over a region for a significant amount of time. So, you know, people experience, people don't experience average temperature. They experience, um, you know, daily temperatures and, and these temperatures are, you know, well, 20, they're already, you know, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius above warming right now for vast regions of the Arctic for periods of time. Okay. So I think I'll do another video talking about these global linkages because there's lots of good images, but basically the Arctic is um, you know, it's, it's changing to a much warmer state. The, uh, it's a much darker place. It's absorbing more solar radiation. There's a lot more, the, the jet streams become so wavy that ridges go far up into the Arctic, bringing heat, large amounts of Arctic air leak south, like over North America this winter, 
the oceans are bringing, transporting tremendous amounts of heat into the Arctic. So all of these factors are combining to a much more greatly warming Arctic. Thanks.